learn about the Extensible and Generic Editor, which is uh, in platform uh, framework as part of Oxygen. Uh, this talk is for Eclipse platform plugin, Eclipse plugin developer, not necessarily in platform, but it's not really a talk for end users. So if you feel more like an end user, maybe you should go see the one from my colleague, Jeff Mori, about Docker and OpenShift uh, in Eclipse ID. <laughs> uh, but if you feel like an Eclipse plugin developer, that should be interesting for you. Uh, this is rather a short talk. It should be 25 minutes, so we'll have plenty of time for questions. I can take my time. Feel free. If there is something you don't get at all, feel free to ask for me to repeat. Uh, I will prefer taking questions at the end, by anyway. So, I am Michael Istria. I've been uh, doing some Eclipse stuff for about 10 years. I love the Eclipse community and so on. Um, and I'm working mainly on uh, Eclipse ID related technologies these days. And uh, this talk was also supposed to be given by Sopot, uh, who is a colleague of mine, who is doing more or less the same thing. Uh, unfortunately, he could not come. So he could not come. So if you were to the conference to see Sopot, because you're fanboys or fangirls of Sopot, I'm sorry, but this is not for this time. Anyway, uh, so we both work for Red Hat as part of the Red Hat Developers Program, uh, which maintains a very good website called developers.redhat.com. I suggest you have a look to this site and maybe register if you're interested in the content. And very recently, we started uh, OpenShift.io, which is a Forge++ solution from Red Hat, uh, based on Eclipse and with a very nice development pipeline, uh, which is so worth a look. So I suggest you to go visit those two sites. And this talk will be about the generic and extensible code editor in platform. So first, um, as a plugin, the story is the story of a plugin developer who wants to add support for uh, a language, a textual language in the Eclipse IDE. The state of art of the Eclipse IDE has a very good thing. Uh, the first thing is that if you are to develop uh, a text editor in the Eclipse IDE, you have a very clear separation between the file, which is where the content is stored, which is where the markers are attached, which is what you browse in the Project Explorer, and the document, which is the working copy of the file. This is where the magic happens when you are in the editor. You don't actually modify directly the file until you saved. You modify the document, and a lot of smartness and validation can happen in, on this document and the editor, which is where and how you edit your document. The editor is what contains the features such as content assist, folding, um, syntax highlighting, and so on. And this very good separation uh, in the platform code for the story of text edition makes that it is very um, it is very valuable for you to consider when you want to add support for text on which layer you are actually working. If you want to add validation, you want validation on the working copy, so it happens on the fly, or validation, or validation on save, so it happens on every save. If you want to add a feature such as auto-edit, do you want it to be only in your editor, or do you want it to react to any text change, in which case it can be a document listener? So you have the choice, more or less, between those three layers, and it is very important for you as developers to always select precisely which one is the best for you, and not pick randomly. If you make the right choice at this point, you, you have a feature which is way easier to maintain and way more powerful, which way more reusable. So keep in mind those three layers and use them as best. But why we identified as the bad in the story of a plugin developer who wants to create a text editor and <coughs> sorry in the Eclipse uh, framework is that at the moment you have a lot of editors, a lot of textual editors. So you have an editor for JDT, you have for, for Java, which is provided by JDT. You have an editor for C++, which is provided by CDT. You have an editor for something else. And all those editors are very separate. They don't share much code, whereas they more or less do uh, the same kinds of thing. All editors, you want something like uh, you want content assist on all editor, and it, it's always implemented more or less the same way. What changes is the request um, is the is the request to identify the content you want to give. So um, the issue is that you have a lot of boilerplate. More precisely, you need to implement an I text editor class. You need to implement a source viewer configuration class, and you always do more or less the same thing. And 
in the end, the fact that you have boilerplate and duplication tends to break consistency. So if you have multiple editors, um, you end up with some editors having taken different choice for the same thing. And from, for you as a maintainer and also for the user, it seems inconsistent. So if one editor makes a big progress in content assist, that has been the case recently with the JDT editor, which puts the, um, some bold characters in what matches your current request. So this was what they did in JDT. And most other editors didn't take advantage of that improvement, whereas it is actually a kind of generic improvement. So um, this need of boilerplate and duplication brings inconsistency. Um, moreover, boilerplate costs a lot of effort for no value, which is a, a productivity thing. Another thing to consider with this approach of re-implementing editor always the same way is that it doesn't really encourage to reusability of uh, it doesn't encourage to separation of editor logic and language logic. Because since your editor is specific to one language, you tend to make your editor specific to one language and you tend to make your language logic specific to the editor. So because there is this too focused editor approach, the, um, the issue is that you have something that is not really reusable. It doesn't force you to separate concern. It doesn't encourage reusability of your editor, nor of your business language, of your language business logic. And finally, uh, an editor by default is not extensible, which is a, a kind of anti-pattern in the Eclipse platform where everything is based on extensions. So if you want extensibility in your editor, you have to re-implement extensibility. As a user, uh, there is a side effect of, of all that is that you can have competing, a competing editor for the, um, for the same file. So if you think, for example, of a pom.xml uh, file, it is both an XML file and both a pom file. And maybe for some things, the plain XML editor will be better than the pom.xml editor. And for some other, the pom.xml editor will be better than the plain XML one. So as a user, you have to know the feature of the various editors that are offered to you to sometimes choose the right editor. And I wish good luck to any user to remind what are the specific value of each editor over the other. So the multiplicity of editors uh, becomes a usability issue. And uh, yeah, so it's, they can be inconsistent. And another thing is that the end user, if you talk with an end user, what did you do in Eclipse ID? They won't tell you, I opened the JGT editor to edit the Java file. They say, I edited the Java file. End users are file centric because the file is what you maintain on file system is what is on Git. The file is, is really the, um, and that's a good thing, I believe, is really the, the, the artifact a, manipulator, a developer manipulates. So to this problem of duplication and replication, we went for the basic uh, object oriented principle. Uh, I, re I recommend this book. If you didn't read it, it's a, a piece of art. Uh, it's based on the Gang of Four, but it's made funny and very entertaining and it's design pattern for kids. And uh, I like when things are explained for kids. Um, so there are two rules. Uh, prefer compositions over inheritance. This one brings a strategy design pattern. And another is don't call us and we'll call you. This one is called the Hollywood principle and it brings an extensibility pattern. And those are the regular patterns we see in many places in the Eclipse ID. In many, many cases, you can provide an implementation of an extension, and then the ID will pick the best one. And this is the pattern that we miss in this specific case of the editors. So we went uh, simply to say, okay, let's implement those patterns on uh, a new editor because we cannot really change the legacy easily in Eclipse. Uh, it's an issue for sure, but it's also what makes Eclipse very backward compatible. It's what makes that some 10 years old plugins are still working on new versions. So yeah, we have to deal with it. It's for, it's for good reasons. And we implemented a new, <coughs> a new editor, which is supposed to be able to edit any file. Um, you just give it a file and the editor will resolve, will be, will be improved with external contribution according to the content of what you're editing. In that case, 
Here you see an editor for the .target file, which is the typical target platform file uh, from PDE. And here you see an editor for a Gradle file. And both editors are actually the same. This is the same class uh, generating both editors. And this, is, this editor only delegates the language logic, such as uh, syntax highlighting or completion. It delegates this language logic to your extensions, to, to extensions. And when I say language logic, what I mean as of now, it means that you can contribute to the generic editor for any content type, some auto-completion, which happens to be asynchronous. That's a major, uh, a major change uh, in Oxygen for this editor. Asynchronous completion was introduced. It's not, it's not used yet in JDT and, and CDT, for example, but it's used in PDT and it's used in the generic editor. So you can have asynchronous auto-completion, Hoover. Hoover is tool tip. You, you put your cursor on a text and you see the documentation. Syntax highlighting, render, uh, rendering of errors, warnings, and quick fix. So the idea here is to, um, it is the same pattern as what some other editors are using, such as uh, Notepad++ or Monaco or probably Atom, and most modern editors work that way. They don't want you to create a new editor instance for everything. You just say, okay, for this file, I can bring this syntax highlighting and the IDE does the magic. And this is the, the grain that most of us uh, expect from an IDE. You don't want to redo editors all the time. You just want to provide one completion. So those are the features which are currently supported um, in the generic editor. And when I say that this uh, is extensible, uh, it is extensible in the, in the Eclipse way of being extensible. So the generic editor is in the platform. You have it. Uh, it's, it's given with uh, Oxygen. And what you do to improve it is, first, you have to define or reuse a content type because you don't apply uh, syntax highlighting for all files at once. At once. If you have Java syntax highlighting, you apply it only to Java files, for example. So first you define your content type or you reuse one and then you simply associate, in that case, a presentation rec reconciler. A presentation reconciler in the Eclipse way, in the Eclipse world is uh, syntax highlighting. And you associate this presentation reconciler to uh, the content type. So here I define a presentation reconciler. I say this will apply to the dot .project content type and this will be the implementation of the reconciler. So let's have a look. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is more or less the same thing as, as, as I just explained. Um, you, as a plugin developer, you simply have to create a new plugin to define an, extensions, an extension for presentation reconciler to associate it with the content type, and then you will get the generic editor putting syntax highlighting on the file. The business logic, in that case of a reconciler, we <coughs> will have a deeper look later. Um, so this is typical uh, Eclipse reconciler in that case. You will see that it extends presentation reconciler, which is a plain GFS class, JFS, uh, which means that the code you're going to write for the generic editor doesn't have any coupling with the generic editor. You write JFS code, and this JFS code is pretty reusable. You can put it someplace else, probably. And this will be loaded by the generic editor when it reaches the right content file. So in that case, we are, uh, yeah, we are using Gradle Presentation Reconciler. So the generic editor, you open it on a build.gradle file, and it will uh, find the extension for a uh, Gradle file resolving to this class, and it will simply start this class and plug it uh, to its behavior. So this is really JFS code, and it's, I repeat it again and again, there is no coupling with the editor, and that's a big part of the value of the generic editor. It is that you don't have to know which editor you're targeting. You don't have to do boilerplate. You focus on, in that case, presentation reconciler, which is pure syntax highlighting. And the result is like this. So here is the generic editor with some Gradle code. 
Uh, the reasons why we went down that path is <coughs> are the following. So the first one, um, as you probably understood, is uh, the productivity and time to market. If I tell you, make, uh, please make an editor for this DSL now, I think it, in best case, if you're very fluent with the platform code, it will take you one hour and a half to write uh, a syntax highlighter and a full editor for this, uh, for this content type. And that's, that's really a lot nowadays. Um, the idea here is that if I tell you put support for this DSL, you do what, what I just demonstrated. You create one plugin, you implement a presentation, you define a presentation reconciler, you implement it, that will be the hard part, and that's all. So you have almost zero effort in integration as opposed to one hour and something previously. So reducing the effort of integration allows a better productivity and uh, a better time to market. And the time to market is very important nowadays. Um, I believe you already felt it, but the, the quality, the high quality is not the main expectation uh, in the tools world these days. What's expected by uh, end users is more that you support very fast, even with minimal support, you support very fast new technologies. Eclipse was built the other way around. By design, it tends to push to very strong support, but it takes a lot of time to bring it. Now we need weaker support faster. So this is the time to market, uh, the, term, the time to market reason behind the generic editor. Another one which is very, <laughs> very important is the separation of concern, which allows to distribute the work. Uh, since you abstract the, since you have a more compound, uh, composite approach of an editor, you, you just add components to an editor, you can give one component to someone, one other to someone, you can separate also, uh, you can put the presentation reconciler in one plugin and the completion in another if there is no strong relationship. And the separation of concern drives to better design and easier distribution of effort in terms of uh, manpower, of development effort. Uh, this opens the door to language server. Since, uh, since you can create a, a long, an editor super, a language support for the generic editor without knowing anything, without knowing anything about, about generic editor, you, you can easily say, okay, all my language logic comes from the language server. Okay. And this uh, separation of concern is what has enabled uh, the language server LSP 4 e projects that will be presented afterwards. Um, so it's, it's an important thing. And the final one is uh, quality maintenance and uh, don't repeat yourself. Uh, most of the effort was in factorization. So we factorize the boilerplate, we focus on business logic and strategies and so on. The result is that there is a better quality because bugs are not duplicated, uh, a better maintenance because bugs are not duplicated and so on. And together with factorization, some immediate uh, advantage of a good factorization in any, any code is that you get more consistency, you share more things, so the more you share and the less room there is for inconsistencies. And you have some performance improvement, for example, memory consumptions. Uh, if all editors, all textual editors in the Eclipse ID were relying on the same basis, there would be something like uh, 40 less classes loaded in memory and so on. So you have a lot of benefits with factorization. The list is longer than actually I show. The, the list is infinite. But yeah, I mean, I'm not going to tell you that factorization is good for a while. You probably all know that. Let's get to the first demo. The first demo will be <laughs> an editor for .target files. Um, so here I, I am in the Eclipse IDE. Uh, this is the PDUI project, and this is uh, this was introduced in um, in Oxygen. This is uh, an extension, Org Eclipse PDE generic editor extension, which uh, which contributes to the generic editor for, um, for target file. So this is the content time for a, a target platform file. And uh, this plugin simply defines two extensions for the target file. So if we go to the presentation reconciler, we can see the present, maybe it's too big, we are in a relatively small room, okay. 
So we are in the presentation reconciler. We can see that the imports are only about JFace and SWT. There is nothing about the generic editor. So this is kind of standalone code. There is no dependence, no strong dependency on what it targets. And uh, we implement the JFace presentation reconciler. And we define rules. Uh, in that case, the rules are pretty simple. So it means that this kind of line will become header attribute. So the attribute will be gray. This one will become uh, coat attribute. So that's blue, dark green. So I guess you got it. And uh, I also have another extension for content assist. I, I, I can show you the code. It's using the regular JFS uh, content assist class as well. So no, no magic. Uh, here, since uh, the content assist in this editor is going to do some P2 request and so on, so I won't get into detail. But uh, the key point is that it's implementing this method, uh, which is a JFS method from this interface, and the generic editor will do its job with it. Okay, let's start <coughs> the target ID. So here is our target file. It's already open. Cool. Um, so as you can see, don't move. I hope it's going to remain for, for the whole talk. As you can see, we have the, um, the syntax highlighting. Uh, the quote is blue. The comment is gray. It's what I showed you earlier. So the syntax highlighting did work and, the, and looks good. And if I do content assist there, oh, I don't have internet. Hmm. Okay, so it complains. So here you have to imagine. Um, I thought I, I didn't remember I needed internet for this demo. You have to imagine that if you do control space, it will invoke the content assist processor I showed you. It will run a P2 request against the repository and suggest the various installation unit available in the repository. And same thing for the location. Uh, unfortunately, I don't... Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I will make you trust me a bit more. I hope. Uh, no, this one. So I have prepared a, a fallback. Okay, that's a failure again. <laughs> Sorry. So trust me. No big deal. <laughs> OK, so that's all for this demo. You saw we just created a couple of classes and associated them. And just by opening with the generic editor, we have a good edition value for uh, edition. Use it now. OK, now you, you want to use the generic <coughs> editor. You're really convinced. Um, how do you get started? We thought about it. There is a, a, tutor, um, a template in the PDE plugin to assist you in getting started. And I'll show you that this is working as much, at least, as the previous one. Um, so, OK, let's close this one. Let's create a new project. So new other plugin project, perfect. Let's call org EclipseCon generic editor. OK, fine. <coughs> Next, uh, next, <laughs> and here are the templates. I go to textual editor, relying on generic editor, and here you see the extensions that will be demonstrated. Uh, there are the three extensions of the generic editor, and one which is document setup, and I will get into details of this one because it relates to the slide I showed you at the beginning about the separation of layers. Finish. Okay, here is my super EclipseCon generic editor. And as you can see, it defines um, multiple extensions. The first one is to define the content type for the dot .project file. So dot .project file uh, have a content type, which is uh, this one. OK. The second one is the regular extension. This, uh, when I say regular, it's a new one in Oxygen. It's uh, an extension to say, OK, I, uh, the default editor for this content type will be this editor type. It's editor content type binding. I hope the name is clear. We thought a lot about it. And um, so you say, OK, for this uh, content type, which is dot .project, I, will use, I, I would like to use the generic editor by default. You just say that. So if user double click on the file, it will open this one. And then 
we, we improve, we augment the generic editor with a project reconciler, which is a uh, basic XML support as well. So it will put the tags in blue, I believe, and the header in gray, probably. So it's more or less the one I showed you earlier. Uh, we have a Hoover provider. So same thing, the Hoover provider, you target the project content type and you implement the plain ITEX provider from JFace to return in that case for Hoover it, on, on nature. If I Hoover on a nature, it will show the label of the nature. That's what's provided by this Hoover, but you can make it smarter and smarter as much as you want by improving this class. The content assist uh, processor, so still the same class, still the same method. Uh, in that case, it's going to propose the existing projects. Uh, if you have a project, if you're in a project tag and type control space, you would get the existing projects or the existing natures if you are in a nature tag. Okay. And the funny one is the document setup. So that's something we discussed a lot. It's about how to validate uh, a file, how to get error reports as you edit. As I mentioned you, if you want on-the-fly validation, the right layer is the document. You work on the working copy and the document already has the framework for uh, on-the-fly validation. It's not, it's not as easy because it's not named validate, uh, but it is what's called document setup. And same thing here, you see it's targeting the dot project. We, we are very content type centric, which is a good thing. Um, and the document setup, you can override the document change method. So here I did something wrong, but uh, overall it works. And no, it's going to work, but I will explain you what's wrong later. So you override the document change method, and in that method you can put some smartness about validation. In that case, uh, it will try to pass the XML file with uh, a document builder.pass. And if a passing error is found, it will put an, uh, uh, an error marker on the file, because in Eclipse IDE, the markers are not on the working <coughs> copy, they are on the file. You can have annotations on the working copy, but it's a bit more complicated and it makes things a bit weaker. Uh, the good thing with markers is that they show up in the problems list, they show up in the project explorer, they are easily associatable, associable with quick fixes. So we found out that using markers, even for a working copy error, is actually much more comfortable from user perspective. What did I do wrong here? Oh. No, uh, the question was, you know, you don't, currently don't automatically generate annotations from these markers, for example. Uh, we don't, you mean text annotations? Yes. So the markers <coughs> will render as annotations. This is provided by the Eclipse platform. But in this example, we, we could here, yeah, instead of a marker, decide, we could have decided to use an annotation. Uh, I, I really like markers. I find that the grain of the API and the power is very good. So I prefer marker, but you can put annotations. What did I do wrong then? What's going to happen? Okay, I modify a file. This will probably go synchronously from the UI thread and all that will be blocking the UI thread. In that case, it's an XML parsing for relatively small file, it's okay. If you have big files or big operations, this has to be put into a job or a completable feature and made asynchronous. It's, it's really important to, to consider this kind of things because if you do it wrong, uh, the whole IDE can become slow. So this is a, a bad example. It's a good enough one for this demo. Let's get started. So I <coughs> let's get back to the plugin.xml because it's where most of the magic happens. A content type, we say for this content type, please use generic editor. Here is how to use coloration, how to use completion and so on. Let's open a dot project. Okay, with the generic editor. And you see the tags are blue, the documentation is gray, nice. If I break some XML stuff, I get the error report. This comes from the document setup and the document listener. And if I create, uh, if I want to add a nature, uh, 
And if I do control space there, I would get the list of natures. And if I hover on the nature, I should get a label, unless this nature doesn't contribute to a label, which is very likely. Okay, here there is a label. Okay, so there, there was no difficulty in the integration. The, what we implemented was very scoped on the goal. And after, you can put all the smartness you want. But from editor perspective, you didn't manipulate that much editor concept. You manipulate a Hoover concept, code assist concept, and you can mix and match them as you like. I talked about language server earlier. Uh, in next talk in the big room, I will give a talk about language server, uh, which will be only about language server. And this relies on the generic editor. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, uh, please come in uh, 40 minutes in the big room. And don't be late because I have 40, I have 35 minutes. Uh, I have 40 minutes of talk for a 35 minute slot, so I will have to start at time. The future plans for this generic editor. So this is already <coughs> we we are already using it for real use case, uh, all the language server based use case, and. Um, and we, we also use it internally at Red Hat for real uses, use cases such as a YAML, Kubernetes file, and so on. And it's already quite good, I would say. Uh, however, there are always ways to improve stuff. And one of the ways will be to improve the features of the generic editor itself by adding folding, which is usually uh, language specific. You need a specific strategy for folding according to the content type. Auto edit. Uh, here you saw I closed the nature tag. Uh, maybe it could have closed it automatically. So auto-edit may not necessarily be part of the editor. That's something we are still thinking about. Should it be a document listener? So whenever I change the document in whichever editor, I get the, the tag closed automatically. Or do we want it in the editor? This one is, the, is in the gray area. Uh, bracket matching, you are on, a, you are on a, a bracket and you want to match the other bracket. Uh, we say bracket, but for more verbose languages such as uh, ADA or <laughs> it's not mine, <laughs> <laughs> such as ADA or Pascal, you, it's not bracket. They use a begin and end and things like that or shell. So it's more uh, group matching. Um, another thing to work on will be platform itself uh, on some other parts of the framework, such as the commands and so on tends to encourage duplication. We know that all editors will want, for example, uh, a jump to declaration, F3, or control click. All editors want that. And currently, all editors have to redefine the command and redefine the shortcut. And if tomorrow one editor changes the shortcut, all editors will have to do this. So the same level of factorization applies to other parts um, of the IDE. And the main example I have in mind are commands and shortcuts. And finally, uh, you saw that this is very content type centric and currently content type are not uh, fully integrated in the IDE. You cannot define a content type editor association. A content type doesn't have a UI representation with an icon. So we want to improve the, the state of content, of content type in the IDE. All that is part the, of the photon roadmap and uh, efforts are welcome. Uh, your efforts are welcome. Mine are mandatory, but uh, I don't have to. <laughs> we are reaching the end. I would like to thank some people who are not there, but who have contributed a lot uh, to this generic editor. Although they didn't code a lot, but they are very good reviewers and they, they, they really help putting the quality standard in platform UI. Mainly Daniel Megart and uh, Alex Kurtakov. Uh, those are people you don't hear often about. They don't come always to conferences, but those are very, very important people in the platform world and they deserve to be quoted from time to time. And that's all. Do you have questions? Yeah? I imagine you have discussion with other Eclipse projects. Uh, are there any plans to use this feature? So... PDT is already using, uh, no, PDT is considering using it uh, as soon as it is feature complete as much as their editor. Linux tools are moving to generic editor, so Bash uh, and company. Um, <coughs> JDT has a lot, a lot 
of very strong features which are tied to their editors. This is the counter example of what I just spent uh, 35 minute, minutes talking about. You take all the sentences, you negate them, and you get JDT. So um, I don't see it moving easily. JDT is, it will be the, the last one to move. But uh, Linux tools, PDT, I believe, is likely to change. Um, and even if they don't fully adopt the generic editor, they can contribute to the generic editor and keep their specific editor at the same time. So it, it can be a way to transition. If you have an existing editor and want to move to this approach, you don't have to drop your editor. You, you may have to refactor a few classes to make them more reusable. You define the extensions for completion, and then the generic editor will get the same completion as your editor. Okay? So the, the, path, to, the path to migration is not to remove the existing at once. In general, in the Eclipse world, that's an approach that never works politically. You cannot think about trying to remove anything. So you have to find a, a good path. And this one would be the, the good path to, to in, enrich the generic editor without dropping the previous one. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know if you're the right person to ask that, but are there any discussions with the XTEX team so that there are, uh, the editors generated by XTEX would Possibly be based on this I think editor. as soon as this editor has all the features they cover in their editor, they will be fine to switch. There are no strong discussions at the moment, but there are no reasons why not. But if you use the LSP, uh, yeah. uses generic editor, it takes the right now out of the box. Yeah. With all features, uh, <laughs> LSP4E currently uh, supports and XX code supports, so. Uh, it just, you can use it out of the box. If you use the language server part, then it's probably expected. But there are currently no plans to do uh, changes on the Eclipse editor side because similar as in JDT, we yeah. are quite very deep into customizations regarding editors, and so it might not be that easy yeah. to, uh, uh, to change that. Yeah. But this is more profitable for new languages at the moment than for existing ones. Okay. Yes? So, uh, is there any support for handling uh, long running operations during this course? So, for example, you code out the completion in the ta target software monitor yes. and then, then you wait for PD input to go to yes. the so update site and then you, you want to edit some more because it's attempt <coughs> and then you call it again. What happens? So what happens is that uh, the way completion works, if you edit the file out, it's a bit complex. There are a lot of optimizations to, as much as possible, as possible reuse the existing completion proposal. So if you're completing a word and you're typing, and if there are completion proposals that match, it will, it will try to reuse them. Uh, if you move out of the initial range of the completion, or if no no proposal match matches, it will run the request again. I believe that's a very deep question in GFace. Uh, I'm not 100% sure of my answer. I know there are efforts to optimize to minimize the number of requests to not request again when you have good results, uh, but the conditions are a bit. Uh, that's, yeah, th there is no clear rule. Thank you. Welcome. Yes? Features like uh, code templates or save action, uh, actions on save, do you see them as part of Manito in the gray area? Like the no, no, no. <coughs> That's a good question. Okay. Where do you place the save action? on the file. So you put a, a file listener, and when the file changes, you may do save action, such as modify text and so on. The other one was? Uh, code format, for instance. Code format, I would do it personally. Here you have choice, you can do it in the editor. I will do it as a document uh, listener. So whenever someone types something, you run a formatting analysis, and if necessary, you format. That's on the fly formatting, I mean. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So 
I guess the, the extension points are, are new in, in, in Oxygen, right? Yes. And the interfaces that you have to implement for this are those also new? No, the, the editor faces that I, I probably should have spent more time taking it. It was really part of the design to not create any new interface as part of this in order to get existing editors easy to adopt the generic editor. So how, how old are these so the high code that propose? I mean, so would it be possible to say, okay, my code is still targeting 3.7, but I, I can add the extension and if someone is new enough, Eclipse, then the extension will just pick up the code, but the code is still combined with the old Eclipse. Or it's not that old. The, the interface one, the one like uh, I presentation reconciler? No, it's old like Eclipse. Okay, so I could potentially build the code that is still compatible yes. with 3.7. Yes, so the only thing, you, you can deploy uh, the plugin we just wrote. You can deploy it against 3.6 uh, against Indigo. Just the extensions we defined will be ignored because no one consumes them in the ID. The generic editor consumes them. If there is no generic editor, those extensions are simply ignored. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes? I didn't try. I think that's uh, a good thing for you to try and report. Uh, <laughs> uh, I believe the, the policy uh, that said is that now most extensions do are able to retrieve the context, the mm -hmm. for context. So, if I remember correctly, nowadays you can use injection on almost all uh, extensions which are loaded with uh, executable uh, dot create context. So in such case, you can probably uh, put an at inject and hope for this to be resolved. Um, I have to admit I'm not much following the E4 stuff, so I'm not sure. But does it, does it work for any kind of extension? Do you know the current state? Uh, no, I just know that for some older uh, free extensions, you can have like a, um, a wrapper. property now that uh, allows injecting into even old, uh, even old components. Mm. Um, yeah. That's worth trying. That wouldn't be, if it's missing, I don't think that would be that hard to implement. Uh, it's just a matter of changing the way the generic editor will load the class. Mm -hmm. Currently, it's using extension dot uh, create executable configure executable element. Uh, probably E4 uses another factory which is contextable. Uh, if if the current way to load extension doesn't work, it's just a matter of using a factory which is able to do injection and and that's all. I would say it seems it seems really accessible. But you have to try and report. <laughs> More questions? Or maybe you, you want your break? I can take questions uh, later if you are. Thank you.